Yeah, I think it's just my voice. I think it's the it's the kind of comic voice that I've honed as a as a comic author and, and illustrator, uh, because because to me a lot of the story is about love in the end. Um, but at the same time, uh, uh, I often draw my own family and what they're up to, and it's never like it's never like a sitcom ending at the end of the day where uh, where there's a big group hug. We all love each other, but there's always kind of someone fighting to get in the bathroom. I like pine cone. She's like little and round, kind of like me, so I like that. <laughs>I feel like other people who grew up in rural places agree where, where there was like a lack of choice and then you you gravitated towards whatever you could find that was your interest and it ends up not being like um it ends up being like a weird mixture i suppose of of the things that you found and the things that you liked and uh and what you had access to I like to think, keep things pretty simple. I picked a, I picked a palette that I liked, that I thought suited, and um, played around with with different textures and, and things until it just it was um, uh, bright and and uniform and uh, and and I thought that it looked all right. But I was very nervous, definitely, because all my comics are black and white and, and a particular style. And this was different. This was brighter and bouncier. And, uh, and totally different, and then it, and it was being published, so it had to be good. The fact that I was online first and that I published my own book made me a safer bet to publishers coming my way after, because it's kind of, oh, I think it's a little bit nebulous at first. People were like, yeah, this thing is popular online, but would it sell as a book? We don't know. And uh, it doesn't always equal. Um, but I also, I think the self-publishing thing also sort of uh, validated uh, myself um, to myself as an artist and be like, oh yeah, I can make a book.